I haven't seen any videos on YouTube on how to swap a Turbo 400 into a Fox Body Mustang uh, as f with a Ford, small block Ford power plant as far as bell housing adapter, converter, uh, cross member, drive shaft, all that. So I'll get into all that on what I have on this car, what you need to do to put a GM Turbo 400 into a Fox. And if you're like, I, I have a 5.3 LS, uh, this information is not for you. Get the fuck out of here. I mean, what are you doing here? You're on the wrong video. <laughs> now you might sound, that sounds a little hypocritical and uh, yes, yes it is. Now, if you're watching this video, you're pro probably already decided on a Turbo 400 and obviously you know some things about that. And this, it's kind of preference on if you want to run a Turbo 400 three speed or a Turbo Glide with two speed 400 or Power Glide. You really can't go wrong with any one of those. It's just really comes down to what your preference is, how you think you're gonna set it up, eighth mile, quarter mile, whatever. I like uh, a three speed. This car's kind of heavy, so that's what I run. And if you're wondering about why I don't run a Ford transmission in this, well, obviously I'm not gonna run a T5 in here. And uh, I used to have a, uh, a C4 in here. It was fully built. Um, it was actually a really nice transmission, but the problem with C4s, as you probably know, is they just, they're a really small transmission. Uh, the clutches are tiny compared to a Turbo 400. And uh, yeah, you can stack them and everything, but still, they just don't hold the power that a Turbo 400 will. Right around, you know, five to 800 horsepower is about the limit on a, a good C4. And the other thing bad about C4s is because they're Ford, uh, there's not a lot of converter options out there. Uh, yeah, you can get some nice ones. You can get a PTC or, uh, you know, something like that. But uh, just the options when you go to a GM tranny for GM converters is just basically unlimited. So that's the huge plus to swapping to a GM trans. Okay, guys, first things first, just so we cover all the bases and this information's uh clear i am using just a uh this is just a tubular k member um i can't remember what brand it is it's not upr but they're all pretty much basically the same as you can tell i don't run any sort of uh motor plate on this this car just has standard um shoot i don't know if you can see through there but uh crawl under here there we go it's just uh Standard metal motor mounts. Uh, they're not drop mounts, they're just standard 351 Windsor swap. Solid motor mounts on a tubular K member. Um, the reason I mention that is because that could play a, uh, a part in how far back or forward your motor sits. If you've got a, uh, uh, a motor plate and a mid plate, you're basically, you have the option to put the motor wherever you want. But my stuff is kind of more uh, just standardized more just kind of plug and play buy it and it is what it is so this should just be pretty much the standard um spot the engine will sit when you uh buy a uh tubular k member okay guys you're gonna have to bear with me on here because i'm gonna have to crawl under the car i don't have a, a lift obviously but uh you should get the point here obviously okay so on a turbo 400 or any GM tranny, obviously it's not meant to bolt to a Ford. So you can buy either an adapter plate with the stock bell housing, or you can, what I do is I run a, a JW Ultra Bell, which is uh, SFI rated. It's basically, you know, ex explode proof, more or less. It's meant to protect you in case the flywheel or uh, converter were to blow up or whatever. And, uh, how you, you can look up on how to do that. Uh, obviously you have to cut the uh, stock bell housing off the case of the transmission. And then the ultra bell here just bolts straight to the transmission uh, on the pump. It works very nice and it's just safer. And that's the easiest way to convert uh, a 400 to bolt to a small block Ford. 
Now there's different types of uh, bell housings. You can get them in 157 tooth or 164 tooth. And uh, this is the big one. So just like on a C4, you know, you can get the small bell housing or the big bell housing. And I, on this car, run the big bell housing. And you can do whatever you want, but that's just how this worked out. Okay, so now that you have your, you know, adapter on your tranny, now you want to bolt it to your, your engine. So what I have here, and I'll post some pictures, uh, some still images, uh, this flex plate is just a standard 351 Windsor flex plate. Uh, it's uh, not special in any way, shape, or form. It is, the only thing special about it is it is dual drilled. This is also drilled for a GM converter and a Ford converter, so I can swap between the two. And I did that knowing that I might go to a Chevy trans transmission later down the road. This, the brand of this flex plate is a PRW. Um, it's dual drilled and uh, like I said, 164 tooth. Uh, I know JW makes a, a, a conversion uh, flex plate, but they're expensive. This PRW one here was like 60 bucks and it was, and it's SFI rated. So that's a little, uh, a cheater thing that I figured out that I haven't seen anyone run this flex plate and it works perfect. Okay, and then the converter I have in here is just a standard, you just buy a regular GM converter. Uh, this is a uh, billet circle D converter. Works really well, whatever you run is, you know, whatever. Oh, I this light. Okay, here's where, I won't, it's gonna be hard to see, but. Okay, I don't know how well you can see, but when you run a GM converter that is just a standard GM converter, converter and not a swap converter, you have to have a little collar on the snout of the uh, uh, converter that so it can go into the back of a 351 Windsor crank or a 302 crank. This applies to both. Um, because the snout on a GM converter is bigger than a small block Ford, so you have to get this little adapter snout. And you can get those anywhere um, on jegs or whatever. They're not very much money, but you have to have that. So if you don't have that, you're you're gonna be in it for a bad time because you have to have some, your snout has to ride in the back of the crank to keep everything aligned. Okay, so so yeah, that's what you need. You need the the bell housing. You need a dual drilled flex plate, and you need a little snout adapter. Also, I am running just a. Uh, standard uh, 351 slash C6 dust shield uh, slash, you know, starter locator. And the reason I mentioned that is a lot, all that will play a, a uh, factor in your converter spacing. Now I'm not gonna go into crazy depth. You can look, I might do a video on that later, but uh, you gotta check your converter spacing. Cause if you don't, um, you can take out your, uh, your thrust bearings in, in your engine and I've done it three three times before before I finally figured it out and uh, you don't want that that'll ruin your day but more or less I'll give you a quick rundown is when the when you have the converter pushed all the way into the the pump like fully seated back you want to have about three sixteenths gap between the pad of the converter and the flex plate and how you check that is I just use a little uh, a drill bit, uh, a 3 16 drill bit to check the, the, the air gap. And uh, if you have more than a 3 16 gap, you need shims. And uh, when you bolt it down, because if you have too big of a gap and then you bolt it down, which is obviously going to pull the converter to the flex plate, you can pull the converter too far forward and pull it out of the pump. And that's bad. And it's also bad if, say, you bolt this all together and your converter is already tight to this and you don't have any gap. I've never ran into that issue before, but I've heard of it happening. And uh, that's also bad because then your converter will push on your flex plate too hard because all this moves in here, the fluid pressure and just harmonics, and you will take out your thrust bearing in about two miles. So you need to space your converter correctly. That's a big deal. Okay, moving down the line. 
I run a Stifler's transmission cross member. This is uh, one for a, two, a Turbo 400 swap into a Fox body. It's honestly just worth the money. These are really nice. They're, they're not very much. Uh, this one will also work with like a T56 Magnum and some other long transmissions like a Turbo 400. Uh, they're adjustable. I run their little mount. It works out really well. Okay, and then the last thing you need is uh, a drive shaft. You're gonna need a custom length drive shaft. A, uh, a C4 or a T5 one will not work. Uh, you're gonna have to get one custom made. It's gonna have to be shorter because the Turbo 400 is longer. And uh, yeah, the drive shaft I run is a Dynamics Drive Lines drive shaft. They, uh, they make some really nice quality drive shafts. I run the big uh, 3150, I think is what their U joints. Um, yeah, that's pretty much all you need. You'll need a, uh, a custom shifter, which you can run whenever you want. And uh, that's pretty much how you do it. Uh. Yeah, the main thing is just getting your, uh, your adapter plate slash bell housing, and then your adapter flex plate and uh, your little snout uh, adapter and all that, and it should all go together good for you. And that's pretty much the gist of it right there. I thought I'd just mention it. it's pretty easy, pretty straightforward, but I know a lot of people don't know those little tiny secrets, so uh, I thought I'd make a video on it. Um, if you like these kind of videos, hit the like, hit the subscribe. It really helps out the channel. I really appreciate it. Thanks for watching.